Hi everyone, so it's the tiniest of Logans and I'm back to show you how you can use the Wraith Ripper air cooler and still be able to get your graphics card in without having to mount it right the way down the motherboard because there have been some issues that people have been coming across with it overhanging the first slot on a lot of the motherboards that are out there. So I'm going to show you a really easy way at home that you can do it without too much hassle. Okay, so the case that I've used is the Cooler Master H500M. Now the H500M, you can put a glass front in if you like, but we've uh, got the mesh one in. It's got a glass top on it as well, but there's loads of vents for the air to come out underneath. We've only got a set of fans in this at the moment. Uh, I'll walk you around all the hardware as well. We've gone with the Cooler Master Wraith Ripper air cooler. That's another reason why we went with the case and that was just to kind of show it all in. Now, as I've already said, there are, have been some difficulties with the, the size of the cooler and some motherboards. We've come, at, uh, we've come up with a way, with this case at least, and a way that you can get around it. And what I would say really is quite an easy way of vertically mounting your GPU as well. So that's something you might want to stay tuned in for. Now, glass side panel, we're just going to pull that out. Um, it's slightly tinted, it does work quite well with the, the lighting and stuff, but the reason why I wanted to show you with it off is because we've taken the one off round the back as well. Now the good thing about this is also, because of all the covers, you can see how uh, tidy it looks. There's only these cables that are really visible and some little tiny ones at the top. This um, back section tidies it up really, really nicely. If you wanted to mount a couple of uh, 2.5 inch solid state drivers or even mechanical drivers if you were that way inclined, you could uh, mount those there and there's some nice cutouts down the back. So it's a great way to keep everything looking tidy. The other good reason behind me using this case is where it's all black, it matches in with the all blackness on the uh, CPU cooler itself. And then th that way what I would do is I would just go um, with, if you went RGB everything, then you just add the lighting color to work with the, the accent that you'd normally go with your system. Most of us normally have a favorite color, so you just go that way with it. Keep everything else black, including all your cables and everything, it'll all work really nicely. So we've got G-Skill uh, RGB memory in the back, it's the Trident Z stuff. Works really well with the, um, the AMD platform. We've got a Zenith Extreme for the motherboard, holding it all into place. There is a 1200 watt Cooler Master power supply, but it's one of the quite older ones. That's why the cables are quite big on it. But the reason why I went with it is because I already had it, like I had everything else. And it was just really as a way to showcase. But again, I went with the Cooler Master power supply just because it was here and to keep all the branding in place. GTX 1080 Ti Asus ROG Strix. Now the graphics card is gonna be the bit that's gonna confuse everyone. So this is the bit that I want to kind of go over with you the most. Now, the Wraith Ripper is a big, big air cooler. It needs to be because it needed to cool at least 32 cores and it can do uh, as long as you keep the CPU at stock or go with an offset undervolt as well but it does overhang the first slot on the motherboard. Some motherboards have a one-time slot up there, but with the uh, Zenith, that knocks off the uh, first PCI Express slot, and that's normally where you put your graphics card. So then, because of the way that the lanes are um, laid out, it meant that you had to put it in the third slot, and it just doesn't look right. So, we came up with a funky way to use this case, and the way it's all laid out and stuff, that we can actually put your graphics card in uh, vertically, and I think it works really well. So first things first, with the H500M, you don't get the uh, separating bars on your expansion slots at the back or your PCI slots, as I would call them. So what that does mean is we can pop one out uh, and you don't have any uh, of the metal work going across. So essentially, we've just popped one out and you can see we've got our HDMI here. And if we spin it round a little bit, you can just see the HDMI just poking out there for the, uh, from the graphics card. You can also do it on one of the display ports if you want, because they pretty much line up perfectly as well. You may be wondering though, why I've not used the bolt-in method, because <clears throat> Cooler Master do use or have available a bolt-in uh, vertical stand block for the, uh, the board, and you literally just bolt it in and you bolt your graphics card to it. If we do that, it sits the graphics card right at the top, which is two slots higher, and you can see that we are super close are on the actual GPU at the top. So, um, and it is pretty much, it's like, there is like, it's, it's so tight up at the top. But anyway, 
So we've got that in there, and the way that we got that in there is if I power this off, I'll do it the proper way before I yank the cable out the back. So the way that we've got that in there, as I take the power cables off, is we do have a bracket at the back. Now this comes with the case itself and it's literally just bolted in there. We do have something supporting it, but that was just because we've been moving it around quite a bit. And then the best way I can put it is, it is pretty much literally just lent in there. Now we do still have the riser cable. Now the riser cable does still attach to the third slot because you, with the riser cable, you do have to go very careful about not putting too tight a bend on anything because if you put a, like a 90 degree bend on it you can break the traces and that can be the end of your riser cable so if you've ever had a riser card issues riser cable issues it's normally nine out of ten that you've broken the traces so you have to go pretty careful with it and try and keep the bends all nice and s shaped really if you possibly can so essentially we've pretty much just got our graphics card in there lent up and i've just realized as it's come out, it's taken the tabs off that I had on it. Um, we've got it lent in there. As I said, we had the support bracket up at this end. You can see it's bare and out now, which is a really good way to show it off. Now we do have, this is literally the little plastic thing underneath it. You can see it's just a blanking plug for a radiator, but it was just the right sort of height to help us support it. And then what we've also done, as I zoom you back out again, is to stop the graphics card uh, marking the, um, uh, the, like the powder coat. You can see that I've got those two black tabs on there like that. Well, they are actually the tabs that came off of the SLI bridge. Now they're not, you could glue them on. We literally held them in place. So you can see they're a little bit loose. Uh, but you could put uh, a little bit of PVA glue in there because you, you don't need to hold them in place so that they never come off. You just need to stop it so that when you tip the graphics card back up that way, it's uh, able to just sit in there nicely. So essentially, what you do is you attach your riser card like that. You get your SLI tabs. Now this is a bit fiddly. It might be something that you want to do with a mate or, I don't know, but you can get that in there like that and then you just need to get it over the top of the brace on the on the back side we are touching the cooler at this point you can drop it down a little bit but in all honesty it's not really going to cause you any particular issues for either um, so we've got it sat in there you can see we've got the uh, SLI bridges on that side come and have a look around the other side we could probably do with going back a little bit more and you can just give it a little bit of a, a little bit of a push, because at the end of the day, that's what she said. And there you've got it. You've got your graphics card in there. Yes, it's not permanently fixed. No, I wouldn't want to take this to a land like this. But if you're going to do this, build this last section on your rig, and then literally all you have to do is add in your power cables at the back, which I'm not going to try and do because I'll blank off all of the view for you, and then. That's it, done. Your graphics card's in there, you've not had to buy any special mounts. And it also means you can get your main graphics card in around the uh, Ryzen Threadripper. If you did want to add in a sound card or anything like that, all you really need to do is uh, take some more of the slots out around the back. I'd leave the top one so it looks tidy because then you're not gonna see the rest of them. And you're gonna need a second riser card. Um, a riser cable rather, but you, you do have to go super careful about the amount of them that you're going to have around there. If I was going to run this personally, I use a 10 GB add-in card, so I probably would go about it this route. <clears throat> and if I'm uh, completely honest, one of the reasons why I did this in the first place was the fact that I wanted to size this up to see what I would have to do to go about getting a vertical GPU in there with the possibility of using this, maybe using an AIO, I genuinely don't know yet, but it was just, I wanted to find this out because people were telling me you couldn't mount <coughs> your graphics card in that top slot. So I wanted to find a way to be able to show you guys at home how you possibly could get around it depending on the case that you're using. Okay, so really nice and easy way to show you how to get the uh, GPU in there. Now, people will say that with a lot of cases, 
You're going to have those bars across the back. If you don't use the uh, H500 series of cases, now, yeah, that's easy, but then you can just use a Dremel to cut those tabs off, or you can use, if you want to go really kind of old school, you could use tin snips or something, but you'd need to file and clean the lines up and stuff. But this gives you an idea on how you can get around it. The difference between the, uh, the top of the power supply cover and the actual cooler itself might be different on your case. If you, if you run into issues like that, then you may need to trim the tabs on the bottom of your GPU. If you do that, don't forget about warranty. What I would then do is go on eBay and look for a spare PCI bracket or something so you've got it in case you get issues. If you also do that as well, what you're going to need to do on your um, riser cable, if you've got the PCB on the bottom with the pins on the back, make sure that you get some foam or you get some electrical tape or a li liquid electrical tape or something like that to cover up those contacts on the back so that they don't short on your case because that could be end of GPU and you really don't want to be going down uh, that route. It would be a really expensive mistake because if you fried it in that way, it is a possibility that it might get picked up on your RMA and they may chuck it back at you. So keep all those things in mind. Obviously, you can use a different case, you can use a different cooler. This was just my way. I saw there was a slight issue with some of the people saying that the um, Wraith Ripper was that little bit too big and was uh, covering up the majority of the slots. During our testing, it was something we picked up on as well. So that was the reason why we chucked this together to show you that you can build yourself a decent looking air-cooled rig and you don't necessarily need to start running your graphics card down in that third slot, which obviously looks horrendous. Uh, and it doesn't really cost you anything apart from a riser cable as well. And you can pick those up on Amazon for 20 or 30 quid by the time you've bought everything else. And in all honesty, I think that works kind of well. The other thing I would say is you don't have to use this guide for just with the Wraith Ripper. You could have an AIO in there if you wanted, and you could use this, <coughs> excuse me, sorry, I'm still a bit congested, but you could use this as a guide for the H500M because of that end support. You could use this as a guide for uh, this case in general, and you don't need to buy their specific add-in, but to be honest with you, if you've got this case, buy the add-in, because it's gonna make your life really easy. If you don't have this case and you haven't got that support at the end, as I've said, you can use anything just to hold the end of the graphics card up. Make sure it's plastic or put some rubber over the top of it or put some uh, electrical tape over the top of it. You could even really in reality, by the time you, if you use some um, motherboard standoffs to bolt it in or something, you could use a solid state drive at the end and just nestle it on the end. It's really not gonna matter too much. So there's loads of options for you there. Nice little idea, could be an epic weekend project. And to be honest with you, I think it works kind of well. Just don't forget, with the Wraith Ripper, it doesn't come with a CPU. You do have to buy it separately. I think it's going to be about £120. It is more than good enough for both the 16 and the 18 core. Sorry, the 36 core. Shall I just give up? It's good enough for the 16 and the 32 core at stock or with a minor undervolt. And all the boards, <clears throat> I'm just going to give up today, including the Zenith can keep the, uh, the 32 core at stock in check as well. So you don't need to worry about VRMs or anything like that. So you're now gonna be wondering about temperatures. So 16 core at stock, we were getting with the VRMs on the Asus around the 75 mark with a full load. The CPU itself was around 70 degrees on full load and that was literally abusing the bejesus out of it. That was also what you need to keep in mind as well. As a lot of people were moaning about the airflow in the front of this case, it kept this all nice and cool. If you wanted to swap out and put 120 millimeters in the front, you could do, but then what you need to think about is if you add in 120 millimeters for extra airflow, it's gonna make extra noise. We managed to keep all of this cool like this, near enough silent because this air cooler is actually pretty damn good. So, lots of ideas for you there. You can either take it with this case and this cooler or transfer it into your own ideas at home. Um, but the most important thing is if you do, decide to tweak or do anything, you know, because I've inspired you in this video, I'd love to hear about it on the OC3D forum. So head over there and I check all the build threads and look at them anyway. So make sure you give me a shout out if you've done this and I will come take a look and give you some thumbs up. And you never know, if you do, it might end up on my Facebook page as well. So lots of things there for you to keep in mind. This has been the tiniest of Logans, out.